who disrespectful towards God. Amen. You young sisters who love to switch your goods. Lord. So everybody can bump their horn at you. Yeah. You young girls in school who's constantly pushed up against lockers. You think it's cute to wear pants smaller than your body. Mm. To wear blouses smaller than your body. That's right. That's right. So when you live to get compliments for men, from men, what's going to happen to you when you don't get none? Yeah. Our whole life supposed to revolve around God. When you come to the realization what you was made for, God said, I made you for my glory. God didn't make you to strip for men. God didn't make you do lap dances for men. God didn't make you to be a bed mattress for men. God didn't make you to advertise your body for men. God didn't make you to use women, men. Talk to me. You will never get a man to respect a woman until you give that man to truly respect God. Amen. You will never get a woman to respect herself until she first respect God. Amen. Because when you respect God, you have the knowledge of what you was made for. You was made for God's glory. When you realize you was made for God's glory, you will feel a sense of loyalty and commitment to your creator. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. If my people, which are called by my name, will shall, shall humble, humble themselves, humble themselves and, and pray and pray and what else and seek my face. Look at the steps: humility, prayer, pray. seek my face, seek my face, humility, prayer, seek my face. That's right. If you want results of your prayer, humble yourself. Humble themselves. That's right. That's why the disciples said to Jesus. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to do it. Are you listening? What is prayer, Pastor Jennings? What kind of words should I use? Sincere. When you truly talk to God, there is no proper or improper punctuation marks. It's not the time you talk to God like you got a college degree. He's not impressed. Have you seen preachers? We gonna ask Reverend Lucifer to lead us in prayer. <laughs> Most wise and omnipotent, awesome heavenly Father that have created the solar ubiquitous illuminary up in the heavens, <laughs> the God of the Milky Way, the God of Saturn. <laughs> oh, great God! I don't have the supercalifragilistic and the espialidocious. <laughs> and I know they say. So when we hear these pulpit entertainers, yes, we say, oh man, I wish I could pray like that. He ain't praying. And for a pretense, make love. Listen prayer. at the Bible. Follow me in your Bible. Now in the book of St. Mark, chapter 12, and at verse 40. Mark 12 and 40 says. Which devour widows' houses. They devour widow houses. And for a pretense. And they pretend. Make long prayers. Mm -hmm. They faking. Faking it. If I talk to God and talk to him from the heart. Yeah. Yes, sir. I don't care how broken my grammar is. Right. Lord, That's I ain't right. Do you understand? Yeah. Not, not, not. Dear Lord, Amen. I'm, I'm so improper. I am out of my comfort zone, dear Lord. Right. No, I ain't right. That's right. God help me. I'm wicked. That's right. I got problems, Lord. In other words, when you talk to God, be yourself, but. Be humble. Be humble. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Be humble.
humble and talk to God from the sincerity of here. You men don't be so caught up in your manhood that you're scared to cry if need be. Sometimes you're so full. Words don't come out. You get on your knees with the intent to talk to God. Nothing come out your mouth. Tears. Hallelujah. Scream down from Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From your face. Your manhood have nothing to do with it. That's right. You gotta surrender your manhood. That's right. That's why Jesus said, unless you come as one of these children. That's right. Get rid of your manhood. Amen. Get rid of your womanhood. Amen. Humble yourself Amen. and come before God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't go with me, God. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Get rid of your manhood. That's it. Cry, cry. You're not a real man, no way. Until you obey God. That's right. It ain't a real man in this building. Until you obey God. That's right. You ain't a real woman at all. Amen. Until you obey God. That's right. I cried. Until well, you know. Pastor Jennings, Go ahead. what do you say about beauty? What is your definition of beauty? Your skin? Your hair? Your shape? You want to know what's beautiful? When you're holy. That's right. That's right. Over the years, skin changed. Shape change, vision change, but the beauty of the Lord had never changed. Huh? Glory to God. You understand? Favor is deceitful. What did the Holy Ghost say? In the book of Proverbs, chapter thirty-one, and at verse thirty. Follow me. Favor is deceitful. Favor is, de favor is deceitful. And, and beauty, beauty is vain. It's unprofitable. But a woman that feareth the Lord. A woman that fear God. She shall be praised. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. If my people which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. Shall humble themselves. And pray. Pray. And seek my face. Seek our face. Seek my face. I told you there's only one God to talk to. Right. My face. My face. One. Then what's the result? And turn. Oh, wait a minute. Turn from where? From their wicked ways. All right. Holy church. And you that are listening. First thing, humility. Less thing. Next thing, pray. Next thing, seek my face. Then what's next? And turn from their wicked ways. While I'm humbling myself, while I am praying, and while I'm seeking his face, what am I doing? And turn from their wicked ways. I want God to do something for me. So I got to start stopping. That's right. I got to start turning Hallelujah. to him. That's right. Huh? That's right. Well, Lord, change me. Turn. Let's talk. Turn. How did God change you? Although he allows something to happen to give you the opportunity to change. Change come when you are willing to be changed. That's right. That's right. Sometimes certain experiences that God allowed to happen in your life change you forever. That's true. Is that right? That's right. Change you in a way that you never thought would change you. Amen. That's true. Amen. We have to be making an effort to turn, turn. from their wicked ways. Now hold it. What may seem to be not wicked don't mean it's not wicked. That's right. When a thing is wicked is when that thing is against God, even if it put a smile on your face. That's right. Even if you feel good, even if you enjoy doing it, if God is against it, it's wicked. That's right. If billions of people patronize it and follow it, but if God is against it, it's wicked. Are you listening? So, turning from our wicked ways, 
That means we have to make an effort to refrain, mm -hmm. cease, yes. stop, oh, yeah. right. separate oh, yeah. ourselves from certain places, yeah. certain things, yeah. certain acts, yeah. and certain people. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> For me to Amen. stop contaminating my physical temple with cigarettes, <clears throat> if I'm trying to stop, I can't afford to keep hanging around my smoking buddies. That's right. That's right. That's right. Trying to stop smoking weed, I can't keep hanging around my weed smoking buddies. That's right. Amen. Trying to stop drinking, I got to change my atmosphere, man. I can't keep hanging around you. You know, every chance you get, you asking me for a light. I'm giving you money to buy liquor. How can I criticize you for getting drunk and yet I'm helping you to buy the bottles? Think of it. I'm criticizing you for getting drunk, but every time you need a ride, I'm driving you to the bar. I'm your own personal Uber. So I have to start turning from their wicked ways. So, in some cases, that fake marriage going to have to dissolve. Because, brother, Barbara is still living. And you married to Grace. And yet you want Grace from Jesus. Barbara is still alive. So now you got to give up Grace. You and Grace have to make haste to make space between you and Grace. There has to be some space between you and Grace. That's right. Glory to God. Now, because in God's eyes, you're in adultery. That's wicked in God's eyes, but it's satisfaction to your body. That's right. So now you got to decide who is more important, who is more valuable, Grace or God. That's right. Now, if you decide that God is more important, you and Grace got to have a sit down. Grace, hey, I love you, but Barbara's still living, and I can't be saved. You know, we keep doing this thing. Well, wait a minute. You know, Grace, Grace chewing that chewing gum. Wait a minute. You talking about giving all this up for some Jesus? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Then all of a sudden, Grace do a lap dance for you. And you sitting there, all I want from Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Am I right, I say? The Bible says, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. If God be God, serve him. If Baal or the devil be God, serve him. The whole world have to make a choice. That's right. And as a result of such, we are placed in the valley of decision that the Bible talks about. Multitudes, multitudes. Did you hear this? In the book of Joel, chapter 3 and at verse 14. Listen. Multitudes. A whole lot of folk. Multitudes. Multitudes. In the valley of decision. And what? For the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is closing in on you. In the valley of decision. Why are you still trying to decide what you want to do? That's right. Oh, Jesus. Pastor Jennings, but he's a good man. There's none good but one. And that one is God. But Pastor did in my first husband, he beat me. You don't have to stay with him. The Bible justifies separation. The Bible says if she depart, let her depart, but let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her own husband. The Bible is justifying separation. You ain't got to sit under the roof with no man beating you, verbally abusing you, or threatening you. You ain't got to do that. That man can quote all the scripture he want. What he quote don't mean nothing. 
tell them to come on and live by themselves or sit down and shut up. Right. It ain't no woman, and you women that are watching, it ain't no, you don't have to stay under the same roof when a man beating you, slapping you, cussing you out, threatening you. Right. So, Pastor Dennis, I can leave? Give me the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 7, we're starting at verse 10. First Corinthians 7 and 10. And unto the married I command. Unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. God prefer that you don't leave the husband. But. But. And but. It, but. 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 God knew that every marriage ain't going to work out. That's right. So he implement a law just in case you both end up leaving each other. But. Not divorcing each other. Oh, no. Leaving each other. That's right. Listen. But. But. And if she depart. No, if she divorce. If she depart. Divorce. Depart. You can leave without divorcing. That's true. That's what the Bible's talking about. Leaving. That's right. Separating. Amen. Not divorcing. Amen. 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 But if she. But and if she depart, leave. let her remain unmarried. Then what Bishop said, mm -mm. Bishop said, go on and leave and get you another one. Right. Leave your Honda and go get you a Camry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Leave your Lincoln and get your Cadillac. Right. Leave, your, leave your Ferrari and get your Porsche. Right. That's what your Bishop told you. That's why so many of you folk watching it is mad with me. Because I come on back to Bible and giving you what God gave you, one Eve and one Adam. Amen. 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 Pastor Jennings, you mean to tell me if I leave my man? All right, Pastor Jennings, I'm still young. I still got some fire in me. What am I supposed to do to put the flame out? But and if she depart. If you depart. Let her remain unmarried. You can't get no more meat. Or, but if your fire get if your fire get too high, mm -hmm. here, 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 here's your spring here's your sprinkler system. Or be reconciled to her husband. You got to go back to the one that you left. That's right. I don't want them, Pastor Jennings. Then I can't give you permission to give your body to Tom when Bill is still living. Right. And you, huh? That's right. I can't give you permission to give your body to Tom when Bill's still living. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me I got the, what I got to do with my body? Offered up as a living sacrifice, sacrifice. holy and acceptable one to God, which is your reasonable service. That's right. That's right. Amen. But what, what, what about when Jesus said he let you put away your wife? Mm -hmm. Give me the 10th chapter, chapter of the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10, and we're starting at verse 1. Listen. And he arose from thence and cometh unto the coast of Judea. You know, just certain scriptures, folks don't fill the spirit over. <laughs> certain ones. Nobody, nobody speak in tongues. Certain ones. You know, they got certain scriptures, folks don't fill the spirit over. You know, all the scriptures, folks be like, hey, glory, how am I my shot? Hey. We get one of these scriptures up. <laughs> and I said, I said, I don't like the way it was what he said. And he arose from thence and cometh unto the coast of Judea. Yes. By the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again. Yes. And as he was one, he taught them again. He taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him. And said what? And asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Is it lawful for a man to get rid of his wife? Tempting him. Trying to tie, trying to try Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Yeah. How are you gonna try someone who know all things? That's right. You know you got to be a fool. That's right. All right. And he answered and said unto them, What? What did Moses? Moses command you. What did my, folks love Moses? Yeah. Folks love Moses more than they love Jesus. That's right. I can't even count the amount of letters folks talking about Moses, Moses, Moses. Don't you know one greater than Moses came on the scene? Oh yeah. Eh? All right. And they said Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce. Hey Jesus. Moses let you write that divorce. And to put her away. And get rid of her. And Jesus answered uh -oh. and said unto them. Jesus answered and said to them. For the hardness of your heart. Wait a minute. Why did Moses let you do it? For the hardness of your heart. Why did Moses let you do it? For the hardness of your heart. Right then that told you who divorce is for. What kind of people. That's right. That's right. That's right. God people don't have a hard heart. hard heart. A hard hearted person is a person that's caught up in the flesh. And they don't want to follow the will of the spirit. The hardness of the heart is is a stubborn heart. Stubborn. That's right. Moses let you do it for what reason? For the hardness of your heart. And because their heart wasn't right. He wrote you this precept. But what? But from the beginning of the creation, God made male and female. From the beginning of what? But from the beginning of the creation, 
God made them male and female. So what did God say? For this cause, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to what? And cleave to his wife. Hold it. I right, hold it right there. I want this to be good for you fellows that are leaving your father and mother, but you're cleaving to the wrong species. Go ahead. Are you listening? Go ahead. You're cleaving to the wrong species. That's right. That's right. God said that a man leave. For this cause shall a man leave. Shall a man. A man. A man. A man. Leave. Leave his father and mother. Father and mother. And cleave. To who? To his wife. To his man. His wife. His man. His wife. His man. His wife. His man. His wife. Somebody's wrong. That's right. Then there shouldn't be a rainbow flag Go or nobody church. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Now, Wonderful. don't get upset with me mm -hmm. and say I disagree with that. Give chapter and verse. Mark chapter. My two. name ain't Mark. 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 So you can't say, Pastor Jenny, you were doing all right until you came to that. It was here before I was born. <laughs> That's right. The reason why your flesh disagree with it, because it's good to you, but it's wicked to God. Yeah. And this is one of the things you got to turn from stop turn. doing. That's right. Yeah, That's right. That's right. Anytime that woman is married and her first husband still living mm -hmm. and she got rid of her and Mr. Brown divorced and mm -hmm. now she's married to Mr. Black. Mm -hmm. Every time she uses Mr. Black name, she lies. It's a lie. Because she's a brown, brother. That's right. Long as long as brown breathes, you're brown. That's right. You may switch like you black, but you brown. Amen. When you sign those check, Mr. Black and Mrs. Black, that's truth in lie. Mr. Yeah. Black, he's black, but Mrs. Black is not black. She's really Mrs. Brown. That's in right. God's eyes, you're brown. brown. You know why? Mr. Brown is still living. <laughs> Huh? That superhero, Mr. Brown, right. still living. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, take God. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead, man. Yes, sir. Mr. Black can buy you a Mercedes. Mr. Black can buy you a mansion. Mr. Black can give you a joint account. And Mr. Brown can be no good. Yeah. But as long as Brown is living, you're bound to him. Bound. That's right. And as long as you live with Mr. Black, you are living in adultery. That's it. And if you're Mr. Black's first wife mm -hmm. and Mr. Black never been married, that means Mr. Black is living in fornication. Right. Because Mrs. Brown, who's married to Mr. Black, her husband's living, so that makes her live in adultery. In adultery. So the whole relationship is unclean, That's right. dirty, yeah. wicked. You're living in sin, yes, right. and every time she lay with you, she commit fornication. But every time you lay with her, because you've never been married before, you commit forn uh, fornication, and she commit adultery. adultery. That's Two right. acts on the one sheet. That's right. Go to one hell. That's right. For this cause. Amen. Let the people see. Let the church say, Amen. you may not feel good, Amen. Amen. don't want to give them up, Amen. want to go to bed, Amen. find a place to lay your head, Amen. oh yeah. Don't you feel better now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does it hurt? Show it hurts. But this is old fashioned preaching that preachers used to preach years ago. But they stopped preaching it because the devil dealt with these leaders, these bishops of many of these apostolic churches who was firm against divorce. Bible way used to preach against it. Bishop Lawson organization, the one that Bonner took over. Refuge, churches of our Lord Jesus Christ used to preach against it. Bishop Brooks, Bible, uh, way of the cross. He used to preach against it. All these churches 
that baptized in the name of Jesus Christ has the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues from pulpit down has been sold out for meat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My Lord, my Lord. Then have the audacity to tell you in these organizations it's God's will. It's a new revelation. The Bible speak plain is for the hardness, hardness. hardness of, of your heart. heart. And a hard heart is a hard. stubborn heart. Amen. 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 That's why the prophet said, create in me a new heart. Amen. Amen. Your heart is too hard. That's right. That's right. That's right. You churches have become an embarrassment. To God, yeah. and you members, you're no better because you sit right there and whine and complain and you still support it. That's right. So that means you got play. Well, I don't agree with it, Pastor Jenny. What you go there for? I'm not a drunk. I don't agree with drunks. Why am I hanging out with them? Greetings, brothers and sisters. It is a blessing to be here with our extended family here in Sacramento, California. We thank the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. We are grateful to him for the way of holiness Bill to his servants for our learning. We're going to ask you to bear with us. Uh, we've been on the road every week for several months. And I'm burning up with fever as we speak and have a very bad cold. I should be in a bed. And my wife was asking me, are you still going to California? I said, with the help of God, because we got some hungry souls out there. I am so grateful for you that came out this evening from far and near, and I am very grateful for our minister, Minister Santana. I thank God for his faithfulness and his dedication to the work of the Lord. He is my point person here. Everyone who wants to be baptized in the state of California who've been reaching out to us in Philadelphia, we have been directing them to Minister Santana. And he would text me, text me, text me. I baptized this amount. I baptized that amount. Since the time that people have been reaching out to us, do you know 137 souls went down in water here? In the name of Jesus Christ. Some came out of the water speaking in tongue at the Spirit of God give us. So, California, we're glad to be here with you. I pray that God not only give us strength during this trip, but give us healing because I, I know I need to be somewhere in bed. We was in Houston, Texas, week before last. Saturday night service, the first night, 91 souls went down in the name of Jesus Christ the first night. The second service, which was that Sunday, after that message, 49 more went down, and then Sunday night, 16 more went down. In two days, we baptized 156 souls in Houston, Texas. So that was a blessing. Now in Sacramento, we're here to rumble with you for two days. And uh, I'm a firm believer that the great God of heaven and earth only have one church. 
It's not a black church. It's not a white church. It's not a yellow church. It's just the church. And everybody must be born into that one church. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what keep us traveling like we are. There are hungry souls all around the world just like you. A very nationality under the sun just like you. Who's scared of going to hell just like you. And there's a drive in them to seek truth. I'm a firm believer that if you want to be right, God will make a way for you to get right. I don't care how wild you are, how rebellious you are, how you was misled for years. If there's any desire in you to be Bible right, God will make a way for you to get right in this life. In the scriptures, there was a man named Cornelius who gave much alms to the people. And he prayed until an angel came down from heaven. You know, that's some praying where you can get an angel to visit you. And the Bible tells us how Cornelius was a devout man. Didn't say he was a saved man. He was a devout man. But he was sincere in what he was doing. And God fixed it so that he wouldn't have no excuse. He gave him Peter's address to where the apostles were. He told Cornelius, you send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who lodged with one Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. And when he come, he'll tell you what you ought to do. Anytime your sincerity calls God to send an angel to you. And then the angel let Peter know there's some people praying. And Peter had doubt and the Lord told him, go, doubt nothing. That alone proves to me that if you're sincere and really want to get on God's side, your prayer be answered. God will make a way for you to get your soul right. God will make a way for you to get the right information. So when Jesus comes, you can live with him. That's what this is about, you know. This ain't about going to church and running around and throwing some false prophet some money and have some fake healing meeting and someone blow his breath on you and you fall out and someone push your head on the floor and touch the neighbor next to you. Leave the neighbor alone. Let's come on back to the Bible. That's what we want to do. <coughs> so we're going to deal with this with Bible because, like my precious mother, who was originally, she said, from Brooklyn, <laughs> the churches today, if you go in there, it's an embarrassment to God. What have gotten into churches like this, brothers and sisters? The love for money. Don't misunderstand me. It takes money to run anything. I mean, that's how we was able to rent this place. Money. But the houses, so-called of God, <coughs> have become clubs, entertainment industries. Look at many of the churches that you came from. Did it change over the years right in front of your eyes? Did you not see many things the preacher used to be against, now he condoned? The sin that some preachers cried out against, now when the crowd begin to swell and the money begin to come in, 
Don't speak against sin no more. Churches now is the biggest entertainment racket in the world. And the only thing that got me killing myself, trying to save people, not getting paid, not on no payroll, not getting the check, wasn't voted by a board of directors, not getting paid by no church. Killing myself going from state to state, town to town, village to village, country to country. Trying to wake people up. You have to be dedicated and made a preacher by heaven in order to love people so. You couldn't get these mega false prophets to come in this theater. You can hold a few hundred in here, but they don't look at that as enough to put enough gas in his limousine. My objective is to save your soul from hell. That's why we've been telling people all around the world, pack up and leave your church. You let these low lives, that's your pastor. And some of your pastors is your father, your uncle, your husband, your brother. You're no good grandpappy. Am I right, I said? Yeah. Amen. No good. Let him go get a job and go to work like anybody else. God have never designed church to make a preacher rich. No preacher should get rich from preaching. You shouldn't get a car from preaching. You shouldn't get a house from preaching. You shouldn't be a millionaire from preaching. Jesus ain't get rich from it. His apostles didn't get rich from it. That let me know that Jesus and his apostles was doing it right. They were not doing it the way these devils are doing it here in California and the rest of the world. The way they are doing it, preaching and church, is a worse racket than the mafia. The mafia is organized crime. They use the cleanest pizza shop as a front to mask their hypocrisy. Religion is organized crime. They use the synagogue, the church, and the mosque to masquerade their hypocrisy. The churches is the biggest multi-billion dollar industry racket in the world. When Jesus walked this earth, he turned over tables. He tied into the scribes and Pharisees, called them hypocrites. These men today ain't turning over tables. They're setting up more tables to rob you out your money. Who would ever think a day will come that a preacher will not fear God at all? He would get on public television and tell the world that the Lord told him it's time for a new plane. It's time for a new car. And the Lord told him to tell the people, give me 10 million, give me 50 million, give me 30 million. Not to help the people. Have you noticed the blessing plan in the churches have never been designed to help the followers? The blessing plan in the churches is designed to help the preacher and his family. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? So, the people don't know what the blessing plan is. 
The plan is get your money. The blessing is he got your money. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So we're traveling around the world and I'm forced to set up churches everywhere we go. As I say over the air, we're not a millionaire at all. Not even a half of a millionaire. <laughs> Amen. I believe a gnat got more hair on his foot than money that we had. We old school. We go in town and roll up our sleeves and work like men. Amen. So Sacramento, this won't be my last time, God willing. I want to, I want to get into Fresno, California. I want to get into Los Angeles, California. And my brother named some other. What's the some of the other ones you named out to me? Who's that? No bay. I want to get into your bay in San Francisco. Amen. Amen. So. Next year, God willing, keep watching over social media for the announcements where we'll be. I want to come back to Sacramento and we're going to make some other stops while I'm in this wicked state. <laughs> Amen. Everywhere we go, in every city we stop in, we want to set church up. In every city we stop in. Amen. I don't care if I got to rent a place until we buy something. As long as we can get something to get you out of that club you go to that you call church. Bear in mind, Sacramento, two places you're faced with. Heaven to hell. That's it. I don't care nothing about the office you hold in your church. I don't care if you're the biggest tithe payer or money giver in your church. What do the poor man and the rich man got in common? Death. You both going to see God. And one thing about the worms in the grave, you ain't got rich worms. And you ain't got poor worms. You just got worms. You ain't got racist worms. You ain't got worms just for black folk. You ain't got worms that don't want to consume white folk. You ain't got worms that will not consume my Hispanic brothers or Asian brothers. Your body is made for the worms when you die. And all the dead and the living that's left behind, one day, you're going to hear the sound of Jehovah. His voice, glory to God, hallelujah, is going to ring through the heavens. Purpose of church is to prepare you to meet the Lord. Do we know this? That's what church is for. Prepare you and I to meet God. You want to learn how to get rich? Go to business school. Go to college. Church ain't for that. The only the riches we have to offer you is God's word. That's the most precious thing under the sun. So I'm, I'm glad for this old time holiness message. Amen. I'm pretty sure people watch other men on YouTube, but brother, it is nothing like the truth of God nowhere in the world. It has a different sound from anything else. You see, when you are a hardcore sinner, these preachers like T.D. Jakes and Joel Alstein and 
Fred Price, who are agents of the devil, sent by the devil to represent the devil, to pacify the devil that's in man. It is not in Satan to speak against wickedness. So none of these mega preachers who got mega churches cry out against wrong. So they're not preachers of the word. They're nothing more than motivational speakers. But they never motivate you to live right. They never motivate you to come out of sin. And they never motivate you to turn to God. We want to motivate you to give up your second wife. Am I right? We want to motivate you to stop living together, not marry. We want to make motivate you, Mr. Preacher, to come out of your homosexual lifestyle. We want to motivate you, Miss First Lady of your church, to give up your cheap, weak position. Eh? We want to motivate the world. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back. Come on back to what the Word of God said. That's right. Forget about church organization. We have become more loyal to organization than scripture. And the mistake you have made in being this way, you will be cooperative even when the church organization is wrong and you know they're wrong and you know what they're preaching is wrong and you know what they stand for is wrong. You become more loyal until you ignore the wrong and stay in it. And when you loyal to God, you're going to stick to him if you got to fight your bishop. That's what make me fight the world. Preachers watch and say, oh, that Pastor Jennings, he's mean. He ain't got no love. I'm not a mean guy. I'm a nice fella. It's just they're not used to no one standing up for God. People are not used to that. I'm not tied down to money and wealth and all this other stuff. I'm not tied down to it. Thank God I can preach the word of God free. If you can't preach it free, you shouldn't be up here. Are you listening? All right. Let's get your recipe books open. The Bible is my recipe book. Got all of my good ingredients in there. That's right. Pastor Her, is that you? Oh, pray. Come on up, brother. Come on and make yourself. Brothers and sisters, this is some of my uh, brothers and sisters that say, come on up and make yourself comfortable, Pastor Her. <laughs> These are also some of the brothers and sisters of our Truth of God family. You, you can just got to stare away right over here. You can come on, just come on up that way. Pastor Heard them is originally from Mongolia. <laughs> and him and his family met me in Chicago and went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. So, at the time, he was living in Minnesota, and he talked to me, he said, look, I'm going to Sacramento, California. He said, the church I'm in, they want me to pastor out there, and he said, I want to bring this truth of God message to them. I said, go ahead. <laughs> Give it your best shot. He said, Pastor Jennings, you pray for me. I said, I'm going to be praying. I was praying. And he would keep me posted with the with the results, and it went the way I knew it would. <laughs> Tradition and God don't mix. That's right. Eh? That's right. God is against everybody's tradition. Yes, he is. And what God does is challenge your tradition right. 
and see will you stick to your tradition or will you accept Holy Ghost tradition. Amen. <clears throat> so and Pastor Herr introduced to them because the entire organization <clears throat> was Trinitarians. Oh, he had his work cut out for him. Huh? He said, I need you to pray for me, brother. I said, I got your back. I'm praying for you. So he went, came here to Sacramento, all Mongolian congregation, Trinitarian. And he was standing for that one God, trying to give them the seat, one God. And the entire Trinitarian organization also was baptized wrong. There was baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but not the name of Jesus Christ, which is above all other names. He was work so he was working on that. And, and of course, the board of directors, they, they began to call him in the meeting. And when he told me about it, I kind of smiled. I said to myself, uh-huh, that's what you get when you love God. He said, brother, what should I do? I said, stand for God. I said, stand for God, and if they want you to go, well,